Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to for loops in Python. And to download the sample file for this video, just go to csdojo.io slash python5. So suppose you have this list, a equals square brackets, banana, comma, apple, and Microsoft. Then what if you wanted to iterate through each element of this list? Meaning what if you wanted to do something with each item of this list? So one way to do that, for example, if you wanted to print each element would be to say print a square brackets one, which selects, of course, the first item banana and print a square brackets one and print a square brackets two. So this method works, but it's kind of cumbersome because we need to repeat the same statement over and over again. And that would be a lot of work. For example, if this list had 100 elements, so instead we can use something called a for loop. So you can write for element in a, the list colon four spaces, print element. And this whole block says for each element in a do the following, which is printing, printing each element. Let's see if it works. And it does, it prints out banana, apple, and Microsoft. And you can have multiple statements in this for block as well by writing print element again. And note that we have four spaces in front of this line as well, just like we saw in an if block. And when we run this cell, we see that each element is printed twice. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. We have B square brackets, 20 comma, 10 comma, five. To print each element of this list, we can write for element in B, just like before, print element. And actually this word element is something we can choose. So we can use pretty much anything we want. So let's write for E in B, print E. And once we run the cell, each element is printed. And what if you wanted to find the sum of this list? One way to do that would be to initialize a new variable called, let's say total. And let's initialize it to zero. And in this for loop, we want to add each element E to total. We can do that, for example, with total equals total plus E. Let's get rid of this print statement. And so what this for block does is it'll go through each element in B. So E will be initially 20 and then 10 and then five. And then for each E, we're going to add it to total. So total will be originally zero. And when E is equal to 20, we'll have total, the new value of total is equal to the old value of total, which is zero plus 20. So total will be 20. And when E is equal to 10, the old value of total will be 20 and E will be 10. So the new value will be 30. So at the end, we should have total being equal to 35, which is a sum of this list. Let's check that by printing total after the for loop and let's run this cell and we see 35, which is expected. So what if instead you wanted to find the sum of one, two, three, and four? One way to do this would be to create a new list with these four numbers, but there's actually a better way of doing that. And that is to use the range function in Python. And to use it, you can just write range parentheses one comma five. This means create a range of numbers starting at one, through five, but not including five. And this method is better, for example, if you wanted to find the sum of one through 100, you probably don't wanna write one through 100 explicitly because that would be a lot of work. So like I said, range of one through five creates a range of numbers starting from one till five, but not including five. And it's sort of like a list. And to see what's inside, you can actually convert it to a list with the list function. So I just wrote list parentheses and inside the parentheses range of one comma five. So we're creating a new range and then putting it into the list function to convert it to a list. Let's put it to a new variable C and then print what's inside C with print C. As you can see, range of one five is sort of like the lists one, two, three, and four. And you can use this range in a for loop. So you can just write for i in range one comma five colon, let's say print i. And again, 
this word i is something we chose. So this should print each element in this range, one, two, three, and four, and it does. So what if you wanted to find the sum of these four numbers? You can do that just like before with total two equals zero, and that initializes this new variable called total two to zero, and then we can add each i, these items, one, two, three, and four, by writing total two equals total two plus i. And actually there's a shortcut for it, and that's total two plus equals i. That says the new value of total two should be the sum of the old value of total two plus i. And that way we'll be able to add one, two, three, and four to total two, which is at the beginning zero. So we should get 10 because one plus two plus three plus four is 10. So let's check that by printing total two, and we have 10. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. We're going to use range of one comma eight. So that's the range of numbers starting from one to eight, but not including eight. So if we convert it to a list with the list function, and then once we print it, we'll see one through seven. Now out of these numbers, what if we wanted to find the sum of only the multiples of three? So here, the only multiples of three we have are three and six. So we wanna add them up and find the number nine. It's kind of silly in this small example, but it could be useful when the range is much larger. So to do that, we're going to define a new variable. Let's call it total three to zero, just like before. And then we're gonna run a for loop with for i in range of one comma eight. And here we wanna be able to say if i is a multiple of three, so we wanna check for each number i, if that number is a multiple of three, and if that's true, then add i to total three with total three plus equals i. And to check if something is a multiple of three, we need to learn something called a modulo operator. Here's an example of a modulo operator. Let's say print for percent three. This says divide four with three and this modulo operator percent gives us the remainder of that division. So four divided by three is of course one with the remainder one. So we should be able to print the remainder, which is one, and we did. What if you had print five mod three or 5% three? This should give us two because the remainder is two. And it did. What if you had one mod three? This will give us one because the remainder would be one. And what if you had six mod three? The remainder in this case is zero. So this will give us zero. Okay, so to check if i is a multiple of three, we just need to do i percent three or i mod three. If this is equal to zero, then i is a multiple of three. So then if that's the case, add i to total three with total three plus equals i, and then we're done. Let's print total three. And just to remind ourselves, range of one comma eight is the numbers one through seven, and the multiples of three are three and six. So as the sum of those, we should get nine here. And we just did. Okay, here's a little task for you to practice what you just learned. Can you compute the sum of all multiples of three and five that are less than 100? So to get all the positive integers that are less than 100, you can just do range of one comma 100 and you can check what it looks like with the list function and you can print this list with the print function and you get the positive integers one through 99. So what you wanna do here is add up three, which is a multiple of three, five, six, and so on. And you'll notice that there are some numbers that are both multiples of three and five for example, 15, which is a multiple of three and five. So if you're able to solve this problem, just let me know in the comment below. 
And if you're new here, you should join Dojo Gang by subscribing to this channel. And I didn't come up with this name, Dojo Gang. One of my viewers did. So thanks, The Anonymous, for that. And of course, to download the sample file for this file, you can just go to csdojo.io slash python5. And as usual, I'm YK from CS Dojo, and I'll see you guys in the next video.